Hello and welcome to another Sherwell how-to video by Beyond20. My name is Mark Hilliard and today we're going to be talking about another one of the special controls available in the blueprint portion of the Sherwell service management tool. The uh, third, the, this special control is called the embedded form and it allows us to add additional subforms to a main form in a window which can display specific information based on a map or a relationship or even based on uh, an expression. So the first thing you'll notice is that I'm actually in a blueprint today and I actually do have the embedded form for incident selected. This is the most common and the oldest embedded form that Sherwell utilizes and this particular uh, form is to display uh, specifics. Uh, specifics are special supporting objects that allow you to gather additional info based on classification of an incident. If I check the control properties of this particular embedded form, what you'll see is that it is based on the relationship of incident own specifics. The form type is based as mini su summary form. Uh, you can see here there are three different form types that can be actually embedded using the relationship. Also there's a checkbox here to decide if the form that you select here doesn't exist, it'll just use the next best. Next you'll see that it allows me to display s uh, special text if there is no form to be shown. Uh, in this case just says if a specific form is available, uh, if if a specific form is available after classification, uh, it will appear here. Uh, finally, I can decide whether or not to put scroll bars on the form or to make the form read only, which is useful if all you're trying to do is actually display additional information. We do have several other videos that describe how you map uh, specifics forms to the incident screen, so I'm not going to go into that too, f uh, too far today. Uh, suffice to say that uh, a group map is utilized in order to determine what specifics form gets displayed based on the classification of the incident. Next I'd like to show you how uh, an embedded form can be used uh, using an expression. And in order to do that, what we're going to go and do is take a look at the default change request form. And what you'll see here is that this entire space here in the step view is a subform. And if I take a look at the control properties here, you'll see there is an expression controlling what form to show. Now, it's not using a relationship here. In this case, what it's doing is it's actually using another form from the change object. There are multiple change forms and it's embedding different forms in this space. If I take a look at this particular expression, uh, this is based on expression or text expression in the change request itself, this embedded form toggle. And really what this says is, am I going to show the form for step view or expanded view? And if so, if it's going to be step view, which step are we on? So let's take a quick look at this particular field on the change request f object and figure out exactly how this is working. If I go here to the left, I have an entire folder called embedded forms. The embedded form toggle is actually the field that it uses. I can take a look at that and it temporarily holds the name of the embedded form you want to view, expanded or step. Uh, if we look at the properties, you'll see that it actually has a calculated prop calculated value based on an expression as well, which is the embedded form display field. Do notice that sure, well, there are a lot of expressions within expressions within expressions. So if I look at the embedded form display field, this is the default value for that form change embedded form dot form name. Now that's an entirely separate table, the change embedded form table. So what we need to do is we need to take a look at that and see what it has to say for itself. The change embedded form table is a lookup table 
We can take a look at it here and edit the object. You can see all the information that's stored in this table, and essentially what you can see is the name of the form, the name that is displayed, any information about it, and which step it is, and also what uh, change type. So you can take a look here and see that different changes may have different forms associated with them, emergency, standard, normal, or urgent. Trigger next status actually is how we decide what the next form is going to be. Also a validated field. Yes, no, is it tr So basically what this does, if what this says is when we get to this form, are we going to trigger the next status within the change form, in, within the change object itself. So once you fill out this lookup table with the appropriate form names, you can determine at what point in the change process and workflow you're going to display which form. Now we can see the different forms that are listed here if we just do the drop down from the change form itself and you can see there's a whole lot of different forms and if we say let's say just from normal we'll just start with assess normal you see this is a form and this will be embedded and we have buttons that go that trigger our next uh, subform and we just continue through until we actually complete you know review this is the end and finally we close the, the change. This is a pretty complicated embedded form uh, setup, but you can use the embedded form for almost anything if you have a separate form you want to show on the main screen, much the way you can add a form a separate form to the uh, form arrangement as a tab at the bottom, you can now actually embed those forms directly into your main form and base those on your status or some other trigger within the main object. So the bottom line is that embedded forms can either be used from a relationship between the current object and another object, or they can be other forms within the same object that you want to display on the main screen. Let's take a look at one that's slightly more simple. If we go to the service object, there is also a form here, and you will see uh, that we have two links up here on the right, details and then alignment and cost. And if you look at the form drop-down, we have details and alignment and cost. So if I start with details, this form shows the service name, type, and, and well, quite honestly, a lot of details about the service. Alignment and cost gives us a little bit more information about business alignment, maintenance calendars, things like that. So if I go back to my main form or default form, this, this here is displayed, displays a form based on an expression. Again, page display. Page display is, again, another uh, another um, temporary field where we store the form name that we want to display. There it is. It's under the common folder. And if we look at it, it's validated from a list. And again, you see the names of the forms, details, or alignment, and cost. And the way we get to there, again, is these links here. This details link runs a short one step that updates the business object. And it sets the page display field to details. And as you might guess, the alignment and cost link runs a one step that updates that field and changes the page display to alignment and cost. And that is the field that drives which form is going to be shown in this space here. So that's a very simple example of how a subform can be used to present specific, uh, specific type of subforms within a main form. Hope this has been somewhat helpful and gives you an idea of how to use the embedded form special control within Sherwell. Of course, if you have any questions about how any of this works, please feel free to visit our website, contact us directly at www.beyond20.com. Also, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beyond 20 LLC, for additional how-to videos about the Sherwell service management platform, as well as other ITSM helpful videos. Thank you.